Hi, welcome to Gen Cam Plays Board Games. I'm Gen Cam, and today we'll be continuing, continuing, and maybe completing our playthrough of Sleeping Gods: Distant Skies. Before we get started, I just want to thank you for watching and taking this journey with me. The original Sleeping Gods is probably my favorite game, and Distant Skies takes everything that is great and improves upon it. While I do love the game, mistakes can happen. Hopefully you are getting a feel for the, how the game flows, but if you notice any mistakes, please let me know in the comments below with this timestamp so I can put those corrections in the Klingon subtitles. If you are interested in a really fun live stream playthrough, please check out Barrett and Colin over at Meet Me at the Table. Their live streams are so much fun and they just have me laughing like the whole time. Um, it's been really interesting watching their play because last night I noticed that they went to the exact same location as me with different keyword and got a completely different story than I did. So not just a different outcome, but their story path was different than mine. Just goes to show how wildly replayable Distant Skies really is. With that said, let's get started. Okay, so since it is the start of a new turn, let's flip our ability cards and see what event we get this time. So our first card is gonna be Fire Trap, and we have Hunt. Ooh, Hunt will give us a meat. I definitely wanna discard that Fire Trap before we reshuffle our ability cards though, because that's an eight. <laughs> I think we're just gonna hold on to those, and for our event, we get Curse of Thrak. Oh gosh. Ed finds a strange ring that he cannot remove. Find a way to remove it. Craft eight. Fail. Ed takes six damage. Don't don't put things on that you don't know what they are. Especially here. What are you thinking, Ed? Of course, he was also the one gambling in the street without money. So maybe not the smartest. Okay, so here's the craft part. Clear, who has almost, um, actually all the craft, has no stamina. <laughs> oh, golly. Oh, what do we want to do about that? Um, I don't want to keep spending meat to get... I think we're just going to fail it. Because I know we're not going to get the 8 because we already have 1 in our hand. Oh, it's a 7. Okay, so maybe we won't fail it. We'll take that 7. And let's see if we still have... Mikra's 8. Yeah, so we'll use that. We'll get that up to 8 so that way he doesn't take any damage. So we'll discard these. And we will gain 1... Dog root. That could have been a lot worse. Okay, so let's spend two time to check out 67. Along the shore, a pile of rocks bakes in the sun, rounded and polished from eons of lapping lake water. As Miguel climbs to the top of the pile, something hisses within the dark spaces beneath. Rattlesnakes, and they're angry to find a trespasser so close to their nest. Okay, so we need to do a savvy 11, and oh man, maybe we should have camped. Um, because of course, Miguel, who has four savvy, currently does not have any stamina. <laughs> oh dear. So if we don't, if we fail this, we it's three venom. That's problematic. Okay, let's use a meat to give Miguel a stamina. I really hate to do that, but now with Miguel and Azarius, or Azarius, I don't really know, um, that gets us to seven. So we need a four or higher, and we get a four. Oh, thank God. So we do not need to use this. Whew. All right. Oh, look that. <laughs> Cure venom. All right. You find an old book, soggy and disintegrating, in the nest of a bird. That book will bring you to our, says Azarius. It describes an entrance to the Cinderella, an underground kingdom where imps and giants guard their various kingdoms. And we gained uh, quest 42, keyword cinder. You find a book that describes the entrance to the cinder realm. It lies in the icy mountain north of the ancient building, buried in the snowy tundra. Okay, so I think we do need to camp. I I know we're like super healed up and everything, but I feel like we really should make sure that we have stamina. So let's see if there's any cards that maybe we want to use first. 
I think the only thing I would think of is like Eugene card and that's already been used. Oh, so we should probably use this one that gives us the two meat and the sand honey. And I think that's it. So since we've rested and gotten our cards back, I think we're going to, oh no, we're going to, well, never mind. We're going to wait until we have somebody that needs healing. I was just thinking it'd be good to get rid of those stupid cursed cards. All right, we'll hold on to that as well. And we are going to move, we're going to spend two time to move here. Now we went through two obstacles. So I am going to get rid of two whiskey to avoid those obstacles. Plus we have a lot of whiskey. And now we can see what is at 13. Oh, actually we can't look at 13 yet because we only have one time left. So we're going to take this and move that back up and we're actually going to start a new turn. Oh gosh. And I think I accidentally discarded one of the cards from my hand. Yeah. I actually think I discarded lucky cause I should have three. Okay. Okay. And for this one, we got aim and lion heart. So I'm actually thinking about maybe putting lucky on ed cause I do have four cards and that will put them back in the pool. Oh man. Actually, you know what though? I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to hold on to lucky and I am going to discard. I'm thinking about discarding these two to put aim on Miguel, but we're not at the end of the deck yet. So maybe we'll hold on to him. I just want to make sure that that eight gets back in there when we reroll. All right, let's see what our next event is. And it's a lightning storm. Thunder rolls over the mountains. Prepare for the storm. Oh my gosh. Savvy eight. Fail gain six damage. And what is that? Uh, weekend? We gain a torch. Well, I already know what I'm doing. We're going to use these two again. And they are going to draw. They're already at a seven. Oh, maybe we don't use both of them. Maybe we don't use both of them. Maybe we just use Miguel. If we have to take six damage, that's also not the end of the world. Or Azarius can easily get stamina back. How many low numbers do we have equipped? <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's just use Azarius. And let's see what we get. Oh, shoot. It's a three. Oh, it's only got me to six. It's not the end of the world if we take damage. But let's just use this one anyway. And I'm going to set that here for right now. So that way we get to the eight. That way we don't actually take the damage. Um, this would have blocked two, but two damage is less than six. So we will gain a torch. And now we can check out 13 in the storybook. I sometimes wonder if you are the right man for my daughter. Says Ed, his smooth tone hides the tension growing in the conversation. Miguel clenches a fist, controlling his breath. Oh, I have been nothing but devoted to Roby. Devoted? <laughs> Look at you. You love this. New places, new people, new things to brag about to your intellectual friends. Do you even care that she's home, worried about you? Do you even want to get back? Miguel lets out an exasperated sigh. Even if we do get back, it's not just me she worries about. What if the police finally get enough evidence to convict you? How much worry is that going to cause her? Ed grows silent, a dangerous quiet that says Miguel has gone too far. He stands and walks away without another word. Do you A, ask Ed to scout around so you can talk to Miguel? Or B, ask Miguel to search for supplies while you chat with Ed? Okay, so that's really funny considering, um, I don't know if it was last time, that I made a comment about the backhanded compliment of Ed saying, maybe you're not so bad for my daughter after, or the, maybe you're not the worst son-in-law kind of a thing. Wow. Okay. So I'm not sure. Do we want to scout around or search for supplies? We actually have a lot of supplies. I mean, we don't have like ice diamonds and things like that, that we need, but we do have a decent amount of other supplies, even to the point of supplies are limited and at times we keep we're not able to collect those some so and to be honest i think i'd rather talk to miguel than ed because ed's kind of like on my like my blank list <laughs> yeah he, he's 
He's really not my favorite character. So let's go to 13.1. Ask Ed to scout around so you can talk to Miguel. Miguel paces jerkily, kicking at rocks and making gestures as he speaks. Sometimes he treats me like I'm his own son. he says something like that. He sounds just like my father. I'm sure he's just worried about his daughter, and he's taking it out on you. Miguel nods, staring out at the lake. I don't care what he says. I'm going to ask Ruby to marry me as soon as we get home. Hmm. Be sure to send me an invitation to the wedding. Okay, well, there goes my assumptions that they were already married, since the whole son-in-law comment? I don't know. And quest 47 is keyword wedding. After an argument with Ed, Miguel confided to me that he's going to ask Ed's daughter Ruby to marry him when he, when we get back home. A fact. At any time, you may place this in complete quest to remove any two status effects from Miguel and restore all his stamina. And I think kind of like we got with Pilot, we'll just hold on to that and see if that keyword pops up at some point. And we did cross off 13. Okay, so next let's spend one time to move up here. Oh, we also need to remember that we have a perception one there as well for a search for treasure. But for this one, we should have a keyword. I'm thinking it's gonna be this one. A wooden, a wooden shack, shack clings, clings to the to side the of a rock spire, spire in the glittering, the glittering lake. lake. You, you climb, climb a staircase to the top and knock softly, softly on the wooden the door. door. Why, Why would someone, someone live in such an out-of-the-way out place? The door, the door cracks, cracks open, and the, and the first, first thing you see is a head of white, white frantic, frantic hair. hair. It, belongs it belongs to an aged man. man. He sighs, sitting back down, buttoning up a jacket of green patches. You're a long way from Zokmia, my friend says Azarius. I'm not your friend, and don't mention that damn place again. Now, what do you want? I'm Gloro, and this is my shop of trinkets. You can trade, you can drink my tea, you can stay if you like, but only if you're quiet. He stares at you with one round eye. Do you A, quietly buy a tent? B, gently purchase a treasure map? C, Cautiously show Gloro the book of sketches. D. Silently sip some tea and bid Gloro farewell. Or E. Loudly rummage through the shop. Okay, so I think we are going to spend the three resources to get the tent and then also pay a resource to gain a treasure map. Both of those allow us to uh, return the map or make another choice. So we're going to do those first. So since that was four, let's spin two sand honey, a root, and I guess a knee? No, let's do a torch. Okay, so we got the tent, which is going to give us five health when we camp, so that's awesome. And we got a search for treasure, which I know exactly where that is. Okay, not sure I was planning on going back there, but maybe now we will. Okay, so next, since we do have keyword sketch, uh, we're going to cautiously show Gloro the book of sketches. Gloro is delighted. How did you find this? He cradles the book of sketches like it's his newborn. We found it to the west of here and recognized the sketch at this place, says Jesse. I lost this months ago. It was my granddaughter's sketchbook. She used to live here before her parents took her away. I haven't seen her for years. Tears brim over, over his cheeks. cheeks. Where, Where is she now? now? You ask. Back, Back in Zokmir. Yeah. But, but I can't, I can't see, her see her anymore. The, the sketchbook gives, gives me back a, a little bit of her. So, so I, I must thank you. You, you folks are somewhat trustworthy. trustworthy. Could I, I hire I you to deliver something, something for me? I owe, I owe a significant debt to a ruthless creditor. But I must stay here with my trading post. Some looter will take everything I have. Do you A, agree, agree to the, the delivery, delivery, or B, or B decline? decline? So yeah, I think we are going to agree to the delivery and go to 47.2. Gloro hands you a bundle with a diamond and a stunning green egg carefully wrapped inside. Now, don't lose these, or I'll hunt you down. Miguel laughs nervously. It wasn't a joke. 
says Glora, staring you down with a pulsing eye. You can deliver the diamond and the egg to a man named Milkoff. He's a merchant in Stormlock City, and you can keep this as payment. He gives you a rare flower. Okay, so we got a blood flower, ice diamond, and a jade worm, and quest 46 with keyword death. We agreed to deliver an ice diamond and a jade uh, uh, jade worm egg for Gloro, the trader. He owes a debt to Milkarth, a wealthy merchant in Stormlock City. Well, I guess it's a good thing we're planning on going back there anyway. I'm just not sure when. <laughs> oh, I'm almost tempted to use that uh, jade egg to get... Thrax Pain. <laughs> all the other ones we have. We have two other ones, but they all need Ice Diamonds, which, I mean, now we do have that too, but no, let's not do that quite yet. Let's hold on to what we have. Oh, and I made a mistake. So I did not have Lucky that was actually in the discard. It was Hunt. It had just fallen on the floor because sleeves. So, whoops. So I'm going to put this back in the discard pile and we're going to hold on to this one and hopefully try to not knock things on the floor anymore. So it didn't tell us to return to the map, it told us to go back to 47. Um, but unless we want to loudly rummage through the shop, our only other option is slight, silently sip some tea and bid Gloro farewell. We store one health. We don't have any health to gain. So we are just going to return to map and I am going to take off this hoodie so I stop knocking things over. Okay, so we are going to spend one time to move here, and now we can spend one time to search for treasure. Okay, so we have a base of one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I'd really, really love to be able to get up to that ice diamond. I could put aim on Miguel, and that would discard the eight and the six. So yeah, let's do, let's do that. Let's put this on Miguel so that way he at least has another one anyway. Oh, and he can spend stamina to add. Okay, so let's use Jesse and Miguel. So now we have a base of seven. Plus using more stamina or one of our cards like the binoculars. Oh man, okay, so I'm still kind of debating. Because I do feel like we might come back here, but maybe we don't. I feel like at some point we have to have something that's going to help us with perception so we can get better outcomes, but I'm not sure how much longer I want to wait to be doing this. So let's just go for it. Maybe we'll get something high. I doubt it. It's a two. Oh my gosh, it's a fail. Because that's only nine and we need 11 at minimum. All right, let's use our... And 11 just a tundra berry. Like, that's just not super exciting. Let's use our frog and a honey to redraw fate. Seven. That's better. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So that gets us to 16. Oh, that gets us to 16. That's a jade egg. Oh, no, no, no. I was thinking from the nine. I was thinking from the nine. <laughs> All right. That gets us to 14. And now I am going to spend Mikra's aid to get us to 15 so we can get a diamond. I like that much better. Okay, so this I am going to mark that we got that one on our campaign sheet. So this is 13. We've done two of them. <laughs> okay. That was great. This is going to go into our completed quests. And I say we use two of these fire quartz and the diamond we just got to get the fire blast stone, which is adventure card four. Okay. And it is, oh shoot. Oh my gosh. Okay. So remove one power token. It is six damage plus a die roll, but if you roll negative one, take three damage. Okay. I'm kind of excited about that, though. I'm excited about it. <laughs> Put that with our combat cards. Oh, golly. Okay. So we are... Let's spend the one time to move here. I don't want to get rid of our rope just in case we need it. All right. Looks like we are... You know what? It's only three damage. We're going to take the three damage because then we can... 
We're just going to then immediately use this to get rid of another curse card, which is going to negate that damage. And this is good because we need to shuffle our fake deck anyway. So we will remove that from the deck. Then we only have one left. So we've almost gotten rid of all of the curse cards. Okay, so that brings us to the end of that turn. So we're going to draw our next two ability cards. We have Bold and Gifted. When any player camps, draw one ability card. Well, I can tell you one thing, though. I am not going to probably use those because that's a six and a seven. Like, we'll hold on to those for right now. Probably discard them when we need it. But let's check our event. Oh, gosh. The Hallthrax sees your plane. You must take off before it attacks. I feel like I did this already. Gain one threat. Draw fate plus threat. If six plus, take one plane damage. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I planned on taking the plane from here to Stormlock City, so we might just have to deal with this. I'm not going to keep moving the plane because we'd have to take the damage when we move the plane anyway. So this is going to go with our active ones. Oi. All right. So let's use one time to move here, and we will use one of our whiskey for Claire's daring. And we're finally going to check on those twins at, <laughs> at 11. A moldering boat, boat lies, lies at the, the edge, edge of the, the crystal, crystal lake. lake. Phantom, Phantom crabs walk drunkenly along the boat boards, clicking at the old wood. wood. Do you A, repair the boat and, and explore the lake? lake. B, B, wander, wander around, around the shore. shore. Or, or C, C search, search for, for the, the twins. twins. So I think we're going to wander the shore first because I'm thinking that's not going to block us out from being able to search for the twins. <laughs> so let's check out 11.2. But first we need to do a perception six. So let's just use, let's use, oh man, they're both useful. All right, let's use Jessie because she has four. And then I can also discard this one if I need to. And it is a two, so we're good, because it's a six. Okay, we need six. A broken down cottage sinks into a sea of mud. It looks anxious to fall into the crystal lake as its shingles droop and its long leaning walls bend toward the shining water. You peer into one of the windows, careful not to put weight on the weary structure. You find, you find a journal with instructions, instructions for making an unusual, unusual trap. trap. Okay, so we gained Sticky Trap, where we can use a honey to remove three power tokens, a honey and a root, but we do need to return to the map. So, yeah, going to have to explore there again. And honestly, instead of using Jesse, since it was only three health, I probably should have just drawn for it because every time we search or explore she gets a a health back i need to remember that i need to be a little bit more strategic okay so we're going to use the rest of our time to go back to 11 and i'm just going to jump to search for the twins that is going to take a perception of 10. oh man i think i'm okay with just failing it honestly because Everybody's just going to lose two health, but, oh, uh, so no, we'll lose nine health. But, like, honestly, I feel like our stamina is more important right now. So how about everybody lose one except for, hmm, Jesse will lose three and Azarius will lose three. I need to remember that it is okay to fail. Sand crunches beneath your feet. A cold, cold mist pouring, pouring down, down from, from the mountain, mountain blankets, blankets the shore, the shore ahead, ahead, where something, something red catches, catches your eye. It's, it's a tackle, tackle box surrounded, surrounded by bits, bits of gear, of gear a fishing pole, a tin can, can filled, filled with words, a plate, plate and some and rusty, rusty utensils. utensils. As, As you, you pick through, through the box, box a wild, wild cry rings out. out. Two, Two human forms burst from the fog, scrambling desperately along the beach. Heavy steps shake the ground. From behind, From behind the veil of fog, a titanic cyclops lurches forward, swinging arms like wrecking balls. Its one terrible eye shines with primeval rage above gnashing teeth and a tongue that wriggles like a live snake. 
Two blood-stained horns hang from the monster's head. The twins cannot escape his tree-trunk fingers as he scoops them up and pounds off into the fog bank. Ed and Miguel shudder behind the rock, peering after the cyclops. Jessie is frozen, her feet planted in the sand of the lake shore, gripping her baseball bat pitifully. Miguel, Miguel stares, stares aghast, aghast at the fading forms. Those are the twins. They're, They're going, going to be Cyclops food. We have to help them, says Ed. But this feels like a losing hand. There are ways to take down a Cyclops, says Azarius. But not with your meager weapons. We need to prepare. It will not be an easy fight or an easy journey. The Cyclops roam the tundra north of the canyon. But we need better weapons if we're going to defeat him. So we got uh, quest eight with keyword lake. We found the twins, but a giant cyclops hauled them over the mountains to the north of the lake. Azarius says the cyclops roams the northern tundra. And we also got the fishing pole, win on a water hazard square or water obstacle. Draw fate. If nothing, if one, nothing. If two to six, gain one meat. If seven to eight, gain two meat. Well, since we are here, let's go ahead and draw fate. That's a four. So we're going to gain one meat. So I'm wondering if that's actually here. I mean, I know because the north is warm up here, but this is like an iceberg. So I'm wondering if Lake is actually at 93. But yeah, I don't know if we're going in that direction again. So that unfortunately was the end of our turn. So let's move our timer up. We'll get two new cards. And we have Exploit and Defend. Defend is this character may take damage meant for another character. Kind of cool story, but also not so much. But I do want to get that two out of the draw deck for sure. So let's spend these three to equip Defend on Ed to give him another Moxie. So he is up to three. And then I still have Hunt. It's going to be more expensive. Oh, you know what? Actually, let's add, let's do Hunt instead. It's the same cost. Um, we will plan on equipping this later, but at least the Hunt is useful to us because we can get meat if we need it. Okay, so our event is going to be Maddening Cloud. That sounds awesome. A strange cloud blankets the land, causing hallucinations. Three damage and a madness. Cool beans. Okay. Okay. Madness is no abilities, but we're now at the point that we need everybody's abilities. Um... <laughs> Hi friends, future Jen here. So, because apparently this is my luck, um, I got a new microphone. I got new microphones, there's two. Anyway, got new microphones, kind of like, this would be better than having like this other one in my face all the time. This isn't picking up things from everywhere, including the kid upstairs, all of that. Guess what turned itself off right before going into the boss battle. So, <laughs> we're gonna go back to our old microphone, even though it picks up a lot of other noises, and this is getting returned. And yeah, I'm just gonna fast forward that boss battle because that was that was an hour of recording. And yeah, so I am really, really sorry about that. Um but anyway, back to the game. The ancient salamander retreats to hellish depths leaving you to investigate the cavern. A glowing red sword lies in a carved box nearby. Okay, so we're gonna get adventure card 36, and after all of that, I really hope that was worth it. I also hope you can hear me now. <laughs> oh my god. All right. The adventure card 36 is the Salamander Sword. Oh my god! It's a totem, too! Nine plus the dice roll. Deal plus three splash damage if you defeat an enemy with this card. Oh! <gasps> totally worth it! Heck yeah, let's go! 
I want to fight all the things now. Okay, so we're also going to cross off uh, Defeat Boss 2, because that was the Salamander. And Salamander Sword is a totem. We now have five totems. All right, that's awesome. I'm excited. I, I, I feel better now. <laughs> I'm still returning that mic, though. That angers me. That mic had one job called Don't Turn Yourself Off. Okay, so it is the end of the turn, and we do have this card um, where we need to gain a threat. So that is just um, a health token and draw fate. If six plus, take one plane damage. Okay, and we have two. Oh, thank God. Okay, so we're good there, although that would have been really nice to be able to put on somebody. So that sucks. But we're getting really close to moving the plane, so at least we can get rid of this shortly. But that is the end of the turn. So we are going to go back to the top. We will draw our two cards. We have Deception and Reckless. Deception is a five, but it wouldn't hurt to be able to put that on someone. Because we really do need to get... Actually, we do have like six Courage. It's not... Or Cunning. It's not like the end of the world. We could put it on Miguel. Miguel has one. I did want to get this two out of the pool. But I'm not even really sure where I would put it. Because to put it on Claire or Ed, it would take four cards. But let's hang on to these for right now. We'll figure it out. Oopsie. Look at me moving things all around. Okay. So we now also need to do an event. And we have a snowstorm. Because why not? A heavy uh, white cloud looms overhead. Prepare for the storm, which is a savvy of eight. Fail. Take six damage and a low morale and we're going to gain a torch well here's a problem <laughs> uh miguel and azarius don't have any uh stamina which i should have rested before we ended the turn but we didn't if we're gonna camp anyway we could just fail it we have a lot of ways to heal so let's just go ahead and try for it oh my god <laughs> Oh my god, there's only two of those in the deck. Okay, well, that that's that's an eight that could have been useful somewhere else. But we will get a torch, which is nice. That is super helpful in all the dark, scary places. But I do think that we need to camp. Uh, so we'll get that. We'll use that. What else do we have? Uh, we have that. We have that. We have the thing that gives us meat and honey. So let's use those and see where we are. See if we want to use anything else as part of camping. So let's grab the two meat and the sand honey. Uh, we'll give two, use a first aid kit on Jessie. That gets her to seven. Just to make it easier to, for my brain, I'm going to give everybody their two for camping. So then I can really see what we need. Um, plus they'll get the other five for camping. So do, 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 do. Okay. Um, and then we will use Tear of Mikra. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's do, uh, Miguel has really low. Okay, get him up there. I don't think we'll use any food. Maybe. Actually, there has to be something that's like just two. Nope, the meat's three. Nope, okay. Uh, I mean, there is if we use that, but we'll hold on to these. We'll get our cards back. Everybody will get their stamina back. And, oh my gosh, so I was thinking during the battle that I was running out of power tokens, but I forgot you have these in case you need to put five power tokens on something. That's insane. There are always more power tokens. <laughs> okay, so I know we still need to go to the temple, but I think we're just going to get out of here. So I think I'm going to go one, two, three. Wait, one, two, three to get back down here. That is one, two, three time. And then we have the two time that we need to fly. So that will get rid of this which will give us a whiskey because we are moving the plane. And since we are moving the plane to Stormlock City, we are going to get a whiskey and a rope, which is good because we did not have any more rope. 
I used it. Uh, I used Claire's snare during the salamander battle. So that way she could remove uh, two power tokens, which was super helpful. And we get to build, uh, grab an ability card and we got, oh uh, yeah, this one. All right. Ooh, but now do we want to play something? Oh okay, yeah, let's get rid of all, oh, I mean, I could still hold on to them until I actually need them. Never mind. We'll hold on to him. We'll hold on to him. I was going to put the Moxie one on Ed, but there is no rush for that. Okay, so we are flying and we are flying to Stormlock City. So we are going to, that's going to cost us one fuel and we moved one spot over. So we need to check for damage. It's a six. So we will take one damage. I think the next time we fly, we're going to go to the tundra. I'm thinking because obviously we need ice diamonds and um, cold places sound like a great place to get ice diamonds. Or maybe the northern sea. Okay, and that was a very quick turn. So we're going to go back to the top, grab our two ability cards. <gasps> oh my gosh. Right now I am so glad I didn't spend everything. I am 100% going to spend these two to put this one on, I mean, if I put one more, no, uh, put this one on Azarius because I know we have a couple, like at least one weapon I know that uses Savvy, but now both of them have four and Azarius has like amazing ways to get like a lot, <laughs> a lot between using um, his stamina, but now get rid of a sand honey to get three more. Heck yeah, I'm okay with this decision. So we also, we have a riddle stone that we still need to do. We did not do 17, but I want to go to 65 because we have a couple of keywords that we can use there. Um, I believe that's where debt is and, and auntie. So let's spend our one time to move up there. We will spend uh, two time now. We don't have any of the bonuses because we had just camped. Oh, I need to ma mark the camp on our log. So we only have three camps left for the standard um, campaign. But I think it's a good thing that we are going here because if we get to here and we still have either keyword glutton or that that's going to be a thing. And he did say he would find us if we did not follow through on this. So <laughs> I think this is good timing. And we haven't gotten glutton yet. But if you remember, we fought those bears, like the ancient bears. And glutton was a keyword there. So yikes. You walk through the residential district of Stormlock City. Workers and their families dwell in ancient towers that are cracked and covered in pipes. Old men sweep their doorways, and children chase cats across the pipes. The smell of roasted nuts hangs in the air. Do you A. Eat at a street cart? B. Search for Lakia's aunt? C. Search for Milkarf? so you can pay Gloro the trader's debt. D, visit the alley market. Or E, leave. Okay, so I think first we are going to go to 104 for keyword auntie. You wander the half-abandoned buildings, looking for Lakia's aunt. A street vendor sells old roots and feathers and bits of leather. Beggars lean against the cracked walls and rusty pipes of a bulky tower, holding out tin cups. Okay, so for a cunning of 14, oi, we could do one, two, three, four, five, six, or we can just fail and take two damage each. I think we're gonna do that, so let's flip, it's a five. Yeah, that would have been ridiculous. So everybody's just gonna take two damage. A cobbler points you to a door at the base of another tower. But when you knock, no one answers. Do you A, break the door down? Or B, unlock the door? We are going to do the strength test. We are going to have Jesse and Azarius try to knock down that door. 
So they have a base of seven, so they need a two or higher. Oh my gosh. Oh, you know what? Azaria should have gotten two health at the end of combat. So I'm just going to give that to him now. Um, yeah, that's kind of like not acceptable. So doo -doo -doo, who could do it? Um, so I'm thinking because Ad can redraw fate, but I'm thinking that he would have to be part of the challenge in order to do that. So I think we will just use the gear. Oh, never mind. We'll just use Mikra's aid and get the one that we need. A bare cabinet, rumpled bed, and round table furnish the room. I should have known she can never stay put. Winnie Zalakia. Ed thumbs through a few books on the table. Seems like she's looking for a group that worships a god named Omlud. Azari snatches the book from Ed, unsuccessfully masking his sudden interest. She thinks they meet in a shrine to the northwest? Oh, can we find her, please? I don't want to go back to Thistletown. Lakia's horse eyes glisten. Okay, so we're gonna gain a torch and a meat, but we actually have too much meat. So first we're gonna use a meat to get a um, uh, a stamina back, and then we'll gain a meat. And we also get quest 95, keyword worship. We traveled to Stormlock City to find Lakia's aunt. We found her house, but she wasn't there. A few journal entries make it clear that the Harkian woman is searching for a secret group that worships the god Umlud. They meet in a shrine to the northwest of Stormlock City. Okay, and now we return to the map. So we are going to spend another two time, which is our last two time, to go back so we can check out keyword debt. You find Milkarv the merchant. His shop is filled with strange artifacts, statues, weapons, paintings, and engraved metal. Curved trumpets hang from the ceiling above a basket filled with blood-stained knives. A stone eyeball sits in a jar. Birds squawk in cages. What brings you here, travelers from afar? You're a long way from Lucra, he says, nodding at Azarius. But I don't recognize your garb, he says, examining the rest of you. Do you A, pay Gloro's debt? B, buy the eyeball? Or C, leave? Okay, since that was an explore action, I did give Azarius his stamina back, and I did heal uh, Jesse for one. And I think we are going to pay one resource to gain, to buy the eyeball. I am going to spend a meat since uh, there isn't any left in the supply. And we are going to go to 105.2, which says, I swear this thing moves sometimes. I always feel like it's watching me. I'll be glad to get rid of it, says the merchant. Shivering as he hands over the stone eye. Gain quest 102, turn to back to 105. Okay, and that is Zakra's eyeball. We need, we still need an ice diamond because we are about to give him the ice diamond that we have. Oh man. Okay, so we need to go somewhere cold. <laughs> we are going somewhere cold next. Okay, so now we can go to 105.1. The merchant examines the diamond and jade egg in meaty hands. So he finally paid up. Here, take these for your trouble. I guess I probably could have read that too. So we are going to lose the ice diamond in the jade stone or jade egg. Complete um, quest uh, 48 for death. And adventure card 79 are the bloody la knives. Uh, a synergy for extra two damage, but it's two damage plus two dice. If you roll any zeros, re-roll. All right, so that is gonna go in our combat deck. And we also gain two Tundra Berries, which aren't super exciting since they are the least valuable. And I don't even think I need any. I only have these three. And they all either need the a Jade Egg or they need uh, Ice Diamonds. So that is the end of this turn again. Oh, you know what we should do? We, sh we should use this one. I'll heal three. Uh, so let's just go one, two, three. And we can search the deck and get rid of that last curse card. So there it is. That is the last one. Thank goodness that's done with. 
and this will go in our discard and now we are going to start a new turn we will draw our two ability cards we got buff oh my gosh that would take a lot to put on and entrap well obviously we're not going to do entrap because that's a seven who that buff it would take full hand of seven cards so this plus six to put it on either jesse or azarius <laughs> Azarias, I have no idea. Azarius, but they are the ones that use those two weapons that are really nice. Azarius then would have five strength. All right, so we're gonna hold on to this, and that's probably gonna be attached soon. But I could also put defend on somebody. We'll see. We'll see what we need to do. Oh, but I doubt. Oh, I I should do that. All right, I'm gonna spend these four cards here to put defend on uh, clear. There's something, I think it's wild charge. Do we even use wild charge anymore? I'm not sure. Oh wait, I think we do. Cause that gives her five moxie. And I think that's based off of that. Oh, mad charge. So one plus the moxie. So then she has a, that's five plus two more if she has a synergy. And hopefully we don't have madness. I still need to find out if Madness, what was Madness? It was Weekend, right? That does weird things. Yeah, Madness is no abilities. But I need, I, I don't know if that counts when you're doing, if that's for, um, just for challenges or if that counts for your in combat. Oh, Madness. The character cannot use any of their character board abilities. All of the abilities on their equipped ability cards have no effect but the skill symbols still apply. Okay, I was 100% thinking about that wrong. Okay, anyway, so we need to do an event card, geyser burn, but we're not near the geysers. What? Azarius burns his hand and arm when he falls into a hot geyser. Treat the burns, that is seven. Fail, Azarius uh, gains four damage, which isn't the end of the world, but let's use Miguel to draw. It's a three, so that is the seven that we need. So we are just gonna gain a sand honey, which is really good, because sand honey now gives us three uh, savvy. <laughs> oh my gosh, maybe he should have treated his own burns. Okay, so we're gonna go one to go down to our plane. I think we're also, let's try to repair the plane. So let's use one time, and obviously Claire. Claire's the only one with craft. Wow, she's the only one with craft. And we do have ability cards to up that if we need to, because I think we're gonna go to the tundra. Which one's the tundra? <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna go to the nor uh, to the tundra. All right, so let's see what we get for fixing the plane. She has a base of four. Oh God, that needs to get really high. All right, she has a base of four, got a seven. So that is 11, that's three. <gasps> Wait, what? Three, four. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we um repair for three. So we are back up to five. Wow. Okay. Uh, that's as high as it can get. So no need to worry about that. And now we are going to spend two time to fly. And it's going to be one, two. And we are going to map page 16. Oh, I hate the cold. Okay, right, so now we are going to draw for damage. We moved two, so it's gonna be two plus three. That's a five, which is fantastic because that is no damage, but we do need to use a fuel. So let's move that down. And now we can move, oh man. Part of me wonders if I should have been doing the um, variant where you kind of get dropped off forever, but oh, there's so many things to explore. So now we're gonna take, this is, yeah. Let's just keep going in order. Let's go where we are. Um, we are going to use one time, and now do we wanna go to 18 or 43? I kind of feel like 43 would be a good one because like there'd be better stuff, right? Where there's a hazard? Let's go, let's do 18, let's do 18, and then we'll go up, I don't know. I'm making my way over there though. <laughs> I know I'm gonna make my way over there, and then maybe off to the map this way, but oh, but our whole point of coming here was to get ice diamonds. So yeah, let's go up here. 
Uh, Jesse will take a damage. Uh, Zarius will take a damage. And you know what? Jesse will take another one because she is going to heal when we search. So that is the end of this turn. We are going to move our timer back up, draw two more cards. So we got Nimble and Council. That's okay, we're not really worried about that right now. And of course, our event card, Plane Frost. An ice storm hits the grounded plane. Immediately take two plane damage. <gasps> so glad we healed the plane. Oh, go figure. Immediately take two plane dam damage. Ongoing, you cannot perform a fly action or move the plane. This remains in play until you perform a repair action. <laughs> oh man, but we just did that. Okay. So two damage, but maybe that's what we'll do then. Or maybe what we'll do then is go kind of around like this to come back to the plane. I was going to maybe go off this way, but maybe we just do that. Okay, so let's do our two time to take a look at 43. And oh crap, we do have keyword sender. <laughs> oh... A wicked crack in the rocks, a maw in the hungry mountain, leads you into the darkness. I can feel the heat as we descend. This must be the entrance to the cinder realm, says Miguel, thumbing through the pages of the old book. What is the cinder realm? It's a deep underground labyrinth that stretches thousands of miles, says Azarius. It's a dangerous place filled with titans, mushroom forests, and creatures too strange to imagine. I've never seen it, but I read about it at the University of Lucra. Where the cave ends, the walls glitter with trails of melting ice. The book says there's a secret door. Do you A, find the door, or B, bash the walls until you find a way through? Okay, so the Cinder Realm. Um, we are going to go for the Savvy, so we won't have Miguel... And Azarius use their tokens. That gets us up to eight. And then we have ways to get higher if we need it. And we got an eight, so we are good. 16 and we needed 13. Okay, good there. Under the lichen and thawing ice, there are runes expertly carved into the cavern wall. Azarius reads the runes aloud and a door cracks open in the wall. The passage is tight. You dodge the erratic formations from the low ceiling and step cautiously over the shallow pools of water they feed. But the air is warm and humid, a welcome change from the harsh bite of the tundra. I should have guessed, says Ed. He's the first to leave the tunnel and beckons you into the awesome sight, an underground arena. To the north, glowing rivers of molten rock pour from dark heights. Okay, I'm... I have thoughts. I have thoughts about this. Um, okay, so luckily we have a bunch of Moxie. We have eight if we use Claire and Ed. And we got... So we need a what? We need 12. Okay, we got that. So now we can move to 43.3. As you approach the bubbling lava, blue imps climb from behind the stalagmite. Their tall pointed ears likely heard you coming from far away. Jesse grips Azarius. Are these guys dangerous? Azarius frowns. I don't know. Do you A, intimidate the imps, or B, Befriend the imps. Okay, so I think we need to try to befriend the imps. And the reason why I think that is because if we succeed at intimidating the imps, it's 43.4, but that's also the fail for the cunning um, challenge. So I don't know if we can get that high though. I think right now I'm going to make this do with a meat and a root. We are going to heal somebody up, but more importantly, that is going to give Ed uh, one of his stamina back. So go two, four, uh, 
five, six, because she can keep healing. This will go in the discard because he can use stamina to, oh, that was just to, uh, oh, no, here. He can use it here to up cutting. So we are using everyone on this test. Oh God, that's really scary. That's really scary. Oops, we are not using Zarius because he does not have cunning. I could put this cunning on him. No, it's a seven. Why would I do that? That's stupid. All right, so right now we have a base of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yikes. All right, but I do have um, Lakia and I can discard cards. We can use some of these. Uh, oh God. All right, let's see what we got. And it is a five. Okay, so yes, we have to use these two to get up to 10 to get to the five for the 15 success. Yes, okay, okay, that's fine. Let's do that. I'm just thinking, I don't, oh, I hope that was worth it. Just the fact that the intimidating the imps, it was the same uh, part of the story as a fail. I don't want to do that. So we are going to go to 43.5. The imps take you back to their village, a circle of cave houses covered in soft moss. Many of them lie on the ground, covered in bloody gashes. How did this happen? Asked Jesse, kneeling beside one of them. One of the injured points to the north and holds his neck with slim fingers. Do you A, help the wounded, or B, find and confront their attackers? Those poor babies. Okay, so usually the savvy might not be the worst option, um, but Miguel has no more stamina. So if we fail this, if we fail the savvy, it's two characters gain low morale and one gains frightened. Move one on the time track. Well, I don't want to do that. If we fail at strength, it's negative fourteen health. We have far more ways to be able to succeed at the savvy. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So what can we do to get Miguel some stamina back? We'll just use that one, which is just one root. Uh, that's two health, so that'll just go to clear. That gives Miguel one, uh, whatchamacallit, um, <laughs> stamina. And so we'll use, obviously, Miguel and Azarias. So that is eight, and we need what? We need 13. So we got six, so it's 14, so we're good. Okay, all right. Uh, so that we now means we go to 43.6. You bind their wounds with a bit of canvas, and they offer you a meal of bitter mushroom stew. There are so many things we don't know about this world, says Azarius. So much knowledge that's hidden. When they rebuild Lucra University, I hope I have something new to contribute. The imps guide you to the surface and give you a box of herbs and plants. Okay, so we're going to complete quest 42. Gain quest 119, gain one meat, one rope, one blood flower, and one gurgon leaf. Return to the map. Honestly... If we could have done both and went after their attackers, I probably would have done that too. And 119 is a totem, which is a Cinderland rock. And we definitely have the resources to take care of that one. So I think we're going to... Ooh, we only have one of these stupid flowers. Oh, but we have something, don't we? We have a way. What's a tran transmutation? We do have the trans transmutation potion. So at any point, we can turn one tundra berry into a blood flower. All right, so that is fine. I am going to use uh, these to um, rejuvenate the Cinderland rock we just got. Move to any space on the open atlas with a riddle stone marker. That's not super exciting. Oh, well. It could definitely be helpful like if you're over here and you want to get over there, but I wish it was and avoid the obstacle. So kind of funny, there is like a whole expansion that we, I, I don't even know how, I didn't even look into using the expansion yet for this. Okay, 
So we're also going to get the other resources. Oh, we're getting a blood flower anyway. So we got a meat, a rope, the gurgon root or leaf, and a blood flower. So cool. All right, so let's use a whiskey so we can go one, two, which gets us to 82. But unfortunately, we are out of time. So we are going to take our um, time thing here and start a new turn. <laughs> so we are going to get our two ability cards, sneak attack and fire trap, which we're just going to hold on to for now. We can check our event cargo delivery. Oh, thank God. It's a level one. Merchants ask you to ship goods to Milius town. So this is just going back to the geysers, which I really do not think we'll be doing anytime soon. And okay, so let's go ahead and spend our uh, two times. So one and two to look at 82. Oh, and Azarius will get his token back. Oh man. We have a lot of meat. We have a lot of meat. I'm just like, oh man, we are running low on stamina for some people. There has to be a better way to get stamina. None of our recipes give you a lot of stamina, but maybe that's why meat's so easy to find. I want some ice diamonds. And of course it is a wandering encounter. Okay, so we do not have keyword stair or string. So obviously that's not an option. Um, I don't even know if we need the meat. We might have pretty much as much meat as we need or that we can get we could actually use some meat spin meat to get oh you know what i think we're gonna want to do that anyway so i think we will probably spend some of the meat to get stamina back on claire and miguel on the other hand we would be spending meat to gain two anyway because we'd have to use claire hmm. let's let's see what else we need if we also need miguel oh we probably do let's have uh, Jesse approached the travelers. We will have uh, Ed get the climbing gear because those aren't challenges. We'll have Azarius dig out the camp. We probably want to repair the sled. So I'm just going to spend, oh, you know what? Okay. Yep. So we are going to spend two meat so I can give Miguel and Claire some stamina. Ed is actually going to do the moxie so that way I can have Claire repair the sled since she's the only one with craft. That's it. And then that way Miguel will go get the climbing or the, what is it? Claim the clean, climbing gear. Yeah, because we're probably going to need more rope. All right. So uh, that is not, oh, actually though, since he, Miguel is doing that, he actually didn't need to spend a stamina because it's not a challenge. So I'm gonna give us one meat back. So there's only two left in the supply with that. So that way we can get the most without spending more than we need to, at least for now. So we'll get him back. He will get us a rope. Um, Jesse is going to approach the travelers, which is gonna be quest 109. Interesting, and that gives us keyword string. You meet a tired group of treasure hunters from Lilius Town. We've had a string of bad luck. Our supplies are low and equipment broken. Rumors say there's a secret treasure vault at the top of the peak. It was built ages ago by the people of the frozen city to the south. We're leaving this place before we lose any more of our crew. Not gonna lie, we could probably do a strength of seven if we want to explore this area again. So that was Jessie. So now let's check Claire. She has four craft. So she needs a two or higher. She has the three. And so she is going to get adventure card 84. And that is um, a sled, which is travel two, only usable on maps 14 through 19. That's nice. Okay. Thank you, Claire. Azarius has uh, four for strength. So we need two or higher. And it is a five, Oof. hopefully not completely wasted because we need a four higher there, but that's gonna be adventure card 85. And when we dig out the camp, we get a screaming skull. Oh gosh, so two damage plus a dice roll plus savvy with one block. 
not too bad. That is going to go in our combat deck. And last but not least, we have Ed, and hopefully he can get a four or higher so we can get um, our two meat back. And it's a two. Oh, no. All right, let's see if we have... Oh, if he fails, it's negative four. So we don't have much to help us to get higher moxie. So let's use our basic gear and we can redraw. And it is a seven, so that is now a success. And we will get our two meat back. So I know we have keyword string, but I don't know if I want to spend two more time to get that one. Okay, yeah, we're gonna spend the two time. So one, two, and I am going to send, and since it's a explore, Azarius will get a stamina back and just to eight. We only need seven. So yeah, I'm just gonna only send Azarius so he will spend one stamina. We'll save Jesse's stamina and we will draw. He has a base of four, so we need three or higher. It is a four. So we pass that and we'll get quest 110. You find a frozen doorway at the top of the mountain. After hours of cutting and chipping ice, you enter the ancient vault. There's a metal spear shaft on a shelf with intricate engraving. Gain one jade worm egg, yes please. Gain quest 111, place this quest and quest 109 in completed quests. Quest 111 is, this is one piece of the star spear. When you have all three pieces, read story 123. Huh, okay. And of course we also got our jade egg, which will go into our inventory. Okay, so I think there is no time like the present then to use our sled. And we are going to move one, two, we're gonna to go to 97. Now, of course, because we did cross through this obstacle, we do need to deal with that. So I am going to spend one of the ropes we just got in order to cross over that. And now we can check out 97 in the storybook. Just as you're nearly too frozen to go on, you find a warm campfire. You rush to it eagerly before noticing who the campfire belongs to. Welcome, says a voice that is both rumbling and melodic. The person sitting behind the fire is a tall, muscular woman with the horns of a bull. Azarius curses, reaching for a weapon. Are you an agent of Orfash? Orfash is no friend of mine. Although you could say I'm an abandoned experiment of his. The only one of my kind, just like my friends here. Each the only one of its kind. For the first time, you notice the creatures. A chicken with a snake for a tail sits at her feet. A creature with the front half of a hawk and the back half of a house cat perches on her shoulder. A white rabbit the size of a horse stands beside her, blending seamlessly into the snow until it turns to look at you with bright orange eyes. The gods like to play at creation. They are not always happy with the results. But even we outcasts deserve to live, yes? My name is Dura, and all are welcome at my fire. If you are not busy, why not stay and share a meal with me? Do you A, share a meal with Dura and her menagerie? B, ask Dura for a favor? Or C, be on your way? Okay, so I think we are gonna do the Moxie five. So we are going to use Ed since he has three, so we just need to draw two. And yikes, if that doesn't work, we're gonna have to use meat so he can redraw. So let's see, we get, it's a six. Wow, we didn't even have to use anyone. But let's go ahead and see what we get for 97.1. You spend a pleasant time eating a warm, healthy meal, although you still find Dura's pets a little unsettling. Ed doesn't seem bothered by them at all. In fact, he spends the whole time asking Dura questions about the unique creatures. They're truly exquisite works of art. Each one of them so beautifully creative. He strokes the hawk cat on the back, and it starts to purr. Okay, so we are going to gain one stamina, so I'm going to give that to 
And we are also going to gain a meat, but we are out. So I'm going to spend a meat to get a stamina. And I'm going to give that to Claire. So we gain a meat, gain the aug root. And that is it for 97 right now, unless we can find the keyword endangered. So we have two time left. So we're going to go one, two, and I am going to move to 29 for our next turn. So go ahead and move up our time tracker and we're going to draw two cards. So we have expert or not expert and strain. Oh my gosh. We're getting, we only have two cards left before we reshuffle. And I have a lot of six and sevens in my hand. So I think we're going to have to equip something. Um, I need to equip this one. I'm one card short from being able to put it on Jesse or Azarias. Azarius. So, okay, we're going to hold on to them. And then if I super, super need to, then I will just throw it on somebody else so I can get these high numbers back into the deck. But even that plus one on to anybody would be good. So we could just put it on Miguel if I absolutely have to. So let's go ahead and draw our event. And we have Northern Transport. Hunters want you to transport them to the tundra to hunt. Move the plane to tundra. You cannot be, start on the tundra. Well, that's where we are. So, yay. But hey, at least it wasn't something really bad, right? Okay, so let's check out 29 in the book. Dark smoke trickles from a half circle of wooden shacks. A hunter nods from within a fur coat so huge, it looks like he's being eaten by a large animal. Ask him where we can find the nearest hotel. <laughs> says Jessie. And see if it has room service. She grins through chattering teeth. He says we can sleep on his floor, says Azarius dryly. And I hope you like goat milk, because that's what's for supper. Do you A, stay at the hunter's house, B, buy a weapon, or C, leave? So since we are already at max health, I think we are going to buy the weapon. So we're going to pay four resources. I don't want to give up too much meat because we can use that for stamina, but I think we're going to give up one. We'll also give up a sand honey, maybe a torch because we still have two. Let's, let's give up one more meat. So that is the four resources. So we can grab adventure card 99 and that is going to give us awful log spear, which is one plus the dice roll plus perception protection of three, three plus damage versus bosses. I wonder if that's a hint that there is a boss nearby. <laughs> oh, could be. All right, let's put that in our combat deck. And then I think we are going to spend three time to move one, two, three. That is going to use up the rest of our time. And to go through the hazard, I think we're just going to take three damage. So I'm going to have Jesse take two. And Azarias take one to reach to the three. And that is the end of that turn. So we can move back to the top. We will draw our last two cards. So we have Lion, Heart, and Aim. So I think then we're going to put buff on Jesse. So that is going to require four plus uh, two more, so six. So we will spend these six arch are all sixes and sevens to go ahead and put that on her. So now she also has four strength, just like Azarias, but she also is going to have that plus one on her attack, which is awesome since she's the one that can hit twice and can also hit on diagonal. Jessie might be a little OP right now, but since that's the beginning of a turn, we're also going to do an event. And we have Harkian traders. Harkians want you to haul cargo for them. This remains in play until you move the plane to Harkian forest. You cannot start. And we will get two torches and an ability card. I don't even know if we're going to go back there. So that's probably not happening. All right. So let's check out 56. Frosted steel pokes out of the snow. Another airplane that crashed here from the God Eye. Do you A, dig into the airplane, or B, cut a door into the airplane? Considering we have now a base of 
eight for our strength. I think we're going to do that, but I also need to give Jesse a uh, one health back from doing the explore action. Oh man, that's going to be still pretty high. Craft we can boost, but we have a lot less of it. So we're definitely going to stick with strength. So we're going to use uh, Jesse and Azarias. I will get these shuffled and we will see what we draw. Okay, so we have a base of eight, so we need a four or higher. And we get a four. <gasps> Whew, that was close. And 56.1 reads, inside the plane you find a frozen pilot. He grips an icy stone. Sorry, friend, we need this more than you, says Ed. Gain quest 122, return to the map. And quest 122 is a dormant totem stone of moss. Okay, so we are going to spend one time to move here. And I'm just going to give three damage, one to Claire, one to Ed, and one to Jesse to cover the obstacle. And now we can look at 73. That will give Jesse one health back and Azarias one of his stamina tokens back. Well, this is going to be our lucky day because at 73, we have the keyword lake. So we are going to go to 73.7. If you don't remember, uh, we got keyword lake when we saw the twins being carried off by a cyclops. So I have a feeling that our new spear, which does damage versus bosses, is going to be helpful very, very shortly. Tracks in the snow lead through the skeleton of a titanic beast. Smoke drifts from the skull, and you peer in with your heart pounding in your ears. A cyclops slouches near a bonfire. Even in its low position, it towers over you. Its mad eye reflects the dancing flames between two blood-stained horns. Behind the cyclops, in a woven cage, are the twins, looking frightened and dirty. Do you A, fight the giant, or B, cut open the cage without alerting the giant? A perception 16 is going to be very high to get to. Um, between Jesse and Miguel, we do have seven, but right now Miguel does not have any stamina. We have beaten one boss before, so I say we go big or go home, let's fight the Cyclops. Before we do that though, I am going to spend one meat to heal three. And that's going to be Claire, Jesse, and Azarias. And um, we're going to do that before we start combat. Okay, so for this one, we are able to run from combat. But if we do, we lose quest eight and our chance to save the twins. So, oof. The head is going to start off with an attack, a counterattack of six. So will the torso and so will the legs. The head will cause frighten. The torso has one shield, but then also two damage per all, uh, to all, and then also a frighten. And then we have the legs that will do three weaken. Okay, and so for our first five cards, we have Disorient which I only put here to kind of get rid of things. So I'm glad that came out first because it's not going to be super helpful later or might not be. We have the Screaming Skull, which will be nice because damage does not need to be adjacent. I did not realize when we got that earlier. Um, so hopefully somebody else can attack um, not adjacent. Oh, wait, not adjacent in general. Not even like could be on a diagonal. Oh. <gasps> Oh my gosh. Okay, that's amazing. So we also have Double Punch, the Alzerian Knife, and Precise Strike. So I think we'll have Azarias do Double Punch. We will have Ed do Disorient. Miguel is going to use the Screaming Skull. And I think our plan is going to have Jesse do Precise Strike. Okay, so Ed's going to go first because he is going to remove some tokens. I am just not sure if I want him to go after the head, the torso, or the legs first. Let's him have him go after the legs. He will remove these three tokens. 
Oops, that is the wrong card. <laughs> this card, he's going to remove the three heal block one, so he will take two damage. So next, I am going to have Jessie go, and she is also going to go after the legs. She is a base of two plus uh, four, so that's going to be six. Obviously, she does not have a synergy token, but she is going to do an attack of six, and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to give her an ability to do one synergy token. So let's give that to Miguel. And she does block one, so she's going to take two damage. So Miguel's going to go next, and he is going to go after the torso. And he is going to do two damage plus a dice roll plus his four savvy. And I'm wondering if we want to use... We do have things, I think, that give us savvy. Maybe we'll use that one or give us two more. So we'll think about that. But let's first roll. Like I said, it's going to be six plus the die roll. And it is three. OMG. And because it is the screaming skull, he can place on um, damage does not need to be adjacent. Okay, so that is a total of nine. Oh, but we do have one that we blocked. So I'm thinking we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. That is awesome. And that is four synergy tokens. So we'll give one to Miguel, one to Jesse, one to Ed, one to Claire. And then Miguel will use his synergy token to remove two power tokens. You know what? We're gonna have Azarias use two stamina tokens to remove the other two power tokens. That way Miguel is only taking one damage. You know what, maybe instead of doing the deal one damage to all, we're actually gonna place it here because Azarias is not gonna be able to do the diagonal. So we're gonna place that here. We'll have to take the hit there, that's fine. But that also covers one more synergy, and let's go give that to Jesse. Okay, so now, although thinking further, we could keep it here. You know what? I don't even think I gave Jesse her other hit, the extra one she gets. So that could have gone here because Jesse went. Instead of having a Zarias hit, I think Jesse's gonna go again because she could do the diagonal, so that way we can keep that one there. So I removed that um, synergy token. So I forgot that she now has the same amount of strength. So she has a four, so it's gonna be zero plus four plus the die roll, plus one. So it's gonna be five plus the dice roll. We're hoping for a plus one, because then we go one, two, three, four, five. Oh, actually, we just need a zero or above, and we can cover all of those. And she can re-roll. Oops, should probably clean that we are going there. Okay, and we need, that's fine. Oops, I hit her health. Hopefully that was at 11. Okay, so that is five, that's six. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. She will use a synergy token to remove a power token. And then she will get a synergy token. And so let's give that to Miguel since he doesn't currently have one. And we are also going to, oh my gosh, I got so excited about this one. We didn't use the extra one to hit extra, but that's okay. We are going to get rid of a sand honey to remove the other three power tokens. That does not count as an attack. So Jesse will take two damage. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and block that because I think we're going to probably rest after this. So we will use the hooded coat to block that to damage. So she will take zero. That is the end of the round. And I'm not going to lie, that is so much better than I thought it was going to be. So the Cyclops does not have any enemy phase things to do. So we will grab our next five cards. And in addition to the knives, knife, the Alzerian knife we already have, we have the mechanical fist, the spider silk gun, myth and axe, bloody knives, and the pistol. So I kind of loaded us up thinking that we were going to struggle taking off all the power tokens, but we did pretty well. So not a big deal. 
So we'll have Claire do the mechanical fist since she has craft. Let's have Ed use the spider silk gun. I'm thinking he can take out these three, maybe one of these three. There's these three. A couple things we can do there. Let's have Azarias use the myth and axe. We still have quite a few things that are near each other if he hits super hard. Let's have Miguel use the bloody knives. I think it makes sense since this could block three for Claire to go after the legs. So she is going to have one plus a die roll plus four. So five plus the die roll. And it, oh my God, that is wild. What did I say that was? So that's eight. <gasps> oh, if only she could go on the diagonal. Okay, so I know this is seven, but I think I'm going to go here. Because with Jesse being able to do uh, diagonals, she might be able to kind of clear some of that up. We'll still get a synergy. Oh, man. I just don't want to separate that too, which I guess isn't the end of the world. Yeah, I think we're just going to go on those two. Because then that leaves this open as a four or a five or a seven. Yeah. Okay. So she is going to use her synergy to block the three and then she'll give a synergy to Jesse since she doesn't have one. I think we're just going to go down the line. Um, Ed has a synergy token too. Oh, that's also a block of three, but I think he is going to use, just use the synergy token and he's going to go one, two, three. I would rather not to have to like spend three on those three ones. He will block all of the incoming damage and also give a synergy token. So let's go ahead and give that to Claire since now she doesn't have one. Next up we have Miguel. It's going to be two plus two dice and the synergy uh, will give us another two. Let's have him go after the head because if nothing else he can maybe he can get that four and if he gets does really well he can get some splash damage. Well assuming <laughs> that he doesn't roll negative ones. Oh, I kind of wish I had inside that. Oh my God. So if you roll any zeros. All right, we are going to discard a meat to give him a stamina. Gonna spin that stamina to re-roll a die. And it's a three, so that is uh, two, four, six. Oh man, if I go here, it's that, Four is still going to be by itself. That would give us synergy. Yeah, we're going to do we're going to do that. So that's a synergy, and he is going to give a synergy to let's give it to Ed. He's going to use he obviously used his synergy for that too. He has no block, so he will take two damage. Next up, we have Azarius and Azarius, and he has four. Plus a strength, so that's eight. Ooh, you know what? That's a good call. Because he is four plus four. So never mind. Um, Ed's is going to go there. I'm sorry, Miguel's going to go there. And he gave a token to Ed. So we're going to take that back. Because we have a decent chance of being able to clear this all up with Ed. All right, so it is going to be eight plus the die roll. Okay, I'll still take it. That is gonna be one, two, three. And now we can give the synergy to Ed. He's gonna keep his because we're not removing anything. There is no block on that, so he'll take two damage. And that is gonna be the end of the round. And we've taken out the head. So now we just need the torso and the legs. In addition to the Alzeria knife and the pistol that we had last time, we have our Offalig spear, we have Shwarmay's star, the other pistol, the bone mace, and Mikra's shard. Okay, so if we get this, do this right, we can do this this turn because Jessie could hopefully maybe, I'm not sure, the goal would be is maybe figure out if she could take those out. And then it would be our second attack third, fourth. So Jesse will 100% be doing the Offalug Spear. That's one plus a die roll plus her four. So that's five plus the three damage for bosses. So that's, what are we at? Eight plus nine plus a, nine plus a die roll. So as long as she doesn't roll a negative one, we're going to be good there. Is that right? Let's see. 
six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my gosh, that's so close. Whew. Okay, let's have her go first and then see what happens. So anything but a negative one, anything but a negative one, anything but a negative one. It is an actual one, not a negative one. There we go. Okay, oh my gosh. So that is 10. One will go to a waste, but that is okay. Actually, all that means is we don't need to use her synergy token there. Um, and she does block it all, so she'll take no damage. This keeps moving. I don't know if she was at 10 or 11, so I'm going to, I don't know. I'm going to say 10. Oh, I thought I think she was at 11. I'm not sure. Oh, but she actually would have gotten another one. I didn't even have to stress about it. I keep forgetting that she has this buff now. Okay, well, let's have her go again using the bone mace and hopefully maybe not forget about that extra hit. She's going to go after the legs. And that way she can also block two of it with the synergy token. So she has two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus a die roll. Okay, I'm nervous. Oh, it's a negative one. Oh, that's just the one thing we didn't want. Oh, man. She can reroll once per combat. I don't think I rerolled yet once, or at least for her. Oh, golly. Okay, it's a plus one. Oh my gosh, I keep knocking these around. Okay, so it's plus one. Is that what we needed? We needed two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that will get these three. So it wasn't quite enough to get there, but that's okay. She can now pass off a synergy token. I don't think it actually matters. So let's just give it to Miguel. And she will use her synergy token to block two out of three damage. That puts her now, I think, down to nine. We have two more attacks to do, so it's not gonna matter, honestly. We'll have Miguel go. He's gonna have one, two, three, four, a base of five, uh, plus the roll. It's two. He will take care of the legs, which is gonna be a um, counter attack of three. He will use the fur hat to block that. And then it will be, um, let's have Claire go because she has full health. She will go after the torso. Oh my gosh, these went flying everywhere, huh? Um, she'll go after the torso. It's four plus a die roll. She only needs to hit for one anyway. So that takes care of that. We beat the Tundra Cyclops. Let's go. Oh, and she blocks, she just blocks one of that. That is okay because she will heal when we rest. <gasps> okay, not gonna lie, that went a lot better than I thought it was going to. Before we check our rewards, we're going to mark off boss nine on our uh, achievement list. I think I was calling it a campaign list earlier, but it's the achievement list. And if you defeat the enemy, turn to 73.3. The grotesque giant slams to the ground, burying the bonfire and throwing waves of snow in every direction. Whew, I thought we were dinner, says one of the twins, a young man with freckles and red hair. I knew you were dinner, says the other, a girl with an impish expression behind her exhausted, dirty face. I figured I could get out before dessert. Jesse extends a hand to shake. Where are you two from? Idaho. They say in unison. But we're hoping to go to California. Soon is better, says the boy. I'm Tom and this is Tammy. Okay, so we have Tom and Tammy, which will allow us to either reroll or redraw fate. They also are passengers, so we can now cross them off of our achievements. And we have the Tundra Berry, Jade Worm Egg, and the Ice Diamond. Not gonna lie, we have not been doing very good at finding passengers. <laughs> but I think this would be a good time to look at our totems and see what we can possibly use this Diamond and Jade Worm Eggs on. 
Okay, so we have no hope of doing the stone of snow at the moment. We do not have nearly enough diamonds for that. I do have, we do have enough for Zachra's eyeball, which I think we want to do. I think that's going to help us with perception because it makes sense because it's an eyeball and that is the icon for perception. That does then mean that I am out of blood flowers. So let's do this one first and then let's think on the others in a moment. Okay, Zachra's eyeball is going to be one, two, three, four, five perception. So now we should maybe really try to focus on getting those um, treasure maps because then we can get more totems. Oh, maybe we could get that stone of snow. Oh, wait, this is going to go in our inventory. And then we need to see. So the only thing that's really holding me back is the four blood flowers. I could. Oh, man, I really wouldn't want to do that, though. I technically could use these for a blood flower. Or I have my transmutation stone so I can make a tundra berry, a blood flower. I don't think I want to use better stuff right now to get that, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let's put these away. And But you know what? I think if it is still currently in our inventory, because I... We're going to probably rest really soon. Oh, wow. That's not even like a quest. That's just a thing. At any time, you may pay one tundra berry to gain one blood flower. So I actually have three tundra berries. So let's go ahead, turn in those tundra berries for three blood flowers. I was thinking in my head that that was a transmute, uh, like a, a adventure card. Okay, let's look at this again. I have these two. I have those two, so we can do that. I have a, another leaf for here. I have one blood flower. I have the jade egg. So let's go ahead and use the um, fire crystal, because it's one, it's, oh, no, 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 not the fire crystal. The fire crystal's two above the flower. So let's use the leaf, because it's only one level above, and we will knock these two out as well. Okay, so one of it's a combat card and it is Thrax Pain. Remove two power tokens. It's five plus a die roll, but you take three damage if you roll a negative one. Ooh. All right, that's intense. And then for 98, it is Stone of Moss. Use one root to get three health and two stamina. Okay, I'm not super excited about either of these. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, at least we can cross off two more totems. So now it looks like we have gotten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine totems that are no longer dormant. So I think we're actually going to use this stone of moss. Now I'm going to spend one root. Oh, it's only three health, though. That's fine. That's fine. We'll go... Uh, one, two, and three. And then I'm going to give stamina back to Miguel. And I am going to... Oh, you know what? Claire's not going to do it. It's going to be add that heals. And then let's give another stamina to Claire. And then we are going to move from the end of our turn. So move that back up. We will grab our next two cards, which is first aid and builder. Pay any one resource to add one to fate or use a stamina to heal. We'll draw our events card. Oh gosh. Orphash cultists. Worshippers of Orphash stalk you, planning an attack. Turn and gain one threat. Draw fate plus threat if seven plus negative 12 health and discard this card. This remains in play until you fight them off. Um, It's going to remain in play for right now. We are now going to spend one, two time to move one, two to 18. We are just going to, hmm, let's see. We'll just take the damage. That's fine. One, two, three. That's fine. And then we will look at 18 and then we're only one away from our plane where then we can do a repair action, get rid of that, and then we can fly somewhere else. So let's move our two time down. 
Azarias will gain a stamina. Jesse will heal one. Stone edifices frosted with ice cast long shadows in the tundra. These look like the tops of buildings, says Miguel. Do you A, dig into the snow around the tallest edifice, or B, study the buildings? So I think we're going to do this savvy 10 because we have a decent chance of getting it pretty easily. So I think we're going to do the savvy 10 because we have Jesse, we have Miguel, I have um, first, I'm sorry, not Jesse Miguel. We have Miguel and Az Azarius, and I also have this card I could discard. But of course, we know that Azarius can also get some of his stamina back. You know what, though? Even on his own, that's five. So he's halfway there, and he can do all this other stuff. So we are just going to use Azarius. He has the five, and then maybe we can use other things or our cards. I think we have one to bump it up. But a base of four, we need a five, so we need six or higher. It's a seven, we are good to go. And let's see what we get for 18.2. You study the buildings and find a door in one of them. After examining the stone, you force it open. Ancient stairs lead downward below the surface of the snow field. But the passageway is blocked by rubble and you can go no further. You find a strange pair of goggles nearby. Okay, and we got the crystal goggles, which will give us two more in perception. It does not say, though, to cra uh, cross off the location. So we could go back and explore and see what happens with the strength challenge. But with that, we have one time left. So we are going to move there. So that way on our next turn, we can repair the plane, but since it's going to be the end of our turn, we need to add one threat to the cultist, unless we just want to take care of it. 12 health is not the end of the world. Let's not fight them off for quite yet. It's a, se oh wait, seven plus, higher, so if higher than seven. All right, so it's a seven plus, so higher than seven, so eight or higher. So we're gonna hold on to that. Nothing yet, we'll probably get it next time. That is the end of the turn. So let's move our time tracker up. Draw two cards. We have makeshift and not expert. Let's go ahead and just put makeshift on Ed to get him up to four moxie. And we will just discard these four cards, get them back in the pool and get that one out of here because we don't want that. And then we can draw our next event, Hunting Health Rack. I feel like we're getting things repeatedly. The Health Rack sees your plane. You must take off before it attacks. Gain one threat at the turn end. Draw fate. You know what? It doesn't matter because we are moving the plane on this turn. So that will take care of that problem. Okay, so before we continue this turn, a um, couple things I do want to mention. One, it doesn't seem like it for you most likely, but it has actually been a month since I have recorded the previous turns. So I kind of want to apologize in advance if there's any continuity issues. If you saw my YouTube um, comments, you'll know that my husband was in the hospital. He's fine now, he is home, but he was in there for two months, or two weeks, not two months. So I think I remember what we were doing or what I was planning, but I just wanna give you a heads up, there might be some continuity issues. Also in that month, my cat got on the table and decided to explore the world of sleeping gods. So things got knocked around a little bit. So hopefully I was able to reset everything um, the way it's supposed to be. And I guess the other important thing is I did get new mics uh, during that time. So hopefully we stop having that stupid issue of um, my receivers disconnecting. These are the same mics I know that uh, Steve uses on Co-op Guild and also um, Barrett uses on Meet Me at the Table. So they came highly recommended. Hopefully, we can stop having the issues we were having, but I do think we're getting close to the end of the game. I really do. We have three camps left, but I think we might be coming towards the end. And I know this video is already really long, 
but I don't want to then have a super short video um, later just to end you know the game. So what I'm thinking is we have this card and it's the keyword boiling. Orfash has journeyed to the boiling lakes near Milius and we must follow him there if we are to remove my curse. Mikra told us that she will heal us when we fight Orfash so that we're ready for the fight. We also have the keyword feathers, um, which was the one for uh, Hesra, who said that she, w oh, it's for the god Thrak. Oh, if we ever face him in combat. Mm. Okay. I was thinking maybe she was going to help us with that one, but that's Thrak. But I'm wondering if maybe since the curse being put on us is such a major part of the story, if maybe we want to go fight Orphash and see what happens. And since we'll get healed ahead of time, we could decide if we want to camp first because we do have quite a few adventure cards um, that we could get back. Uh, let's see. Yeah, like our re-roll is in here. Ooh, our sticky trap, which we might want to use. So I think we would still camp anyway, even though we would get healed. Um, let's see what else. We also have the plain frost where we need to fly to, oh, it's a repair action. Okay, so that's a repair action. So we're gonna wanna do that, but we have this one, which is move the plane to the geysers. Emilius is near the geysers. And since we would get healed anyway, and we're gonna camp so we can get our um, stamina tokens back, I think we're gonna try to fight the cultists and just do the nine, which we'll get between Jesse and Azarias. So, not super worried about that. So how about first we do the repair action so we can remove this. That's going to take one time and that will use Claire and only Claire and we are going to draw. It is eight. That's awesome. So that's 12. So we are going to heal three, which gets our plane all the way back up to full health. So awesome. And that gets rid of this event. Now let's fight these cultists. That is going to be Jesse and Azarias. Between the two of them, they have eight, so they can't fail. And it's a six, so we can get rid of this one. This will go into... Oh, gosh, I forgot to get our, um, our whiskey for that one. And then this one will get meat or whiskey. So we're going to take a meat for that one. Oh gosh, I hope it's not one of those situations where we already have all the whiskey. Eeks. Let's see. Okay, nope, I was able to find one. So we got those two done. Oops, wrong pile. And now we are going to fly. We're going to travel. That's going to take two time. And we are going to go to the geysers. So we're going to use one of our fuel for that travel. And then we traveled one, two, three, four, five spaces. So, of course, we have to uh, uh, check for damage. Oh, my gosh. So, we're back down to three damage. Luckily, we did that repair beforehand. Kind of a bummer. We just lost a seven. And since we are here, we are going to pay... Oops, we're going to get our, for cargo delivery, a torch and a whiskey if we can find more. All right, awesome. We do have a whiskey and there's one more in there. So I have to keep track of that one. And we have a torch. This can now go in our discard pile. And since we're here, we are 100% going to refuel because we only have one left. And let's see. You know what? Maybe we won't refuel yet. How many more times do you think we're going to fly? You know what? We're not going to refuel yet. There's still a chance that we are going to fly more. So I guess we will just spend this one, two time to move one, two. So we're at 57 and 16 for the next turn. Oh gosh, the cat knocked over our health things. I'm not sure where Claire was. We'll put her at 10. Uh, yeah, I don't know if Mikra will just heal us or if we would get like a full camp. So we are going to camp before we get to next turn. Make sure everybody has all their stamina, get healed up, get our adventure cards back because I do think that's gonna be important and I don't know if she's gonna give those to us. So let's do that first. 
So we now only have two camps left for this campaign. Okay, so that takes us to the end of this turn. So we're gonna move that on up, get our two ability cards. We're just gonna hold on to those. Okay. And now we'll check for an event. Cargo delivery. Oh, this one wants to go to Harkian Forest, which actually we have another one that wants to do a Harkian Forest. So if this doesn't work out, maybe we'll go there next. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. If after, if we do fight an or fashion fight him and that's not the end, I'm not sure what we are going to do. So we're going to place, uh, oh my gosh, I forgot to do this one. I think I did forget to do that one. That was, do, do, do. It's repair action. Yeah, I forgot to do this one. We moved the plane, so that is the other whiskey, which I think is the last one in the supply. This one we are also supposed to be getting threat on, which I don't think I was doing. My bad. Okay, so took care of those, and now let's check out, oh, should we do 57 or 16? Let's go with 57. Geysers spew billows of hot steam. You find travelers dressed in rags, placing their hands and feet in the steam, howling in pain. What are they doing? Asks Jesse, wincing. They are followers of Shomi, says Azarius. They're mad. They think these geysers are temples to that tyrant, and that self-burning is a sign of devotion. But Shomi is weak now, and likely doesn't even care what they're doing. We should try to stop them. How depraved, says Miguel. Do you A, convince the followers to leave this place, B, search the geysers, or C, leave this place? Okay, so we can do a cutting 14, if we fail, it's negative 12 health, or perception 17. 17 health in a weekend. Our cunning is not that high. <laughs> it really isn't. Uh, Ed has four and Miguel has two. So yeah, that's not great. And let's see what we have for, if we have any thing that would help us. Okay, we severely lack anything for cunning, but we have a lot for perception. Uh, we have binoculars, we have the eyeball, we have Mikra's aid, we have the goggles, we have uh, Lakia, plus Jesse has four, Miguel has three. So I think we're going to go for the perception 17, <laughs> negative 17 health in a weekend if we fail. Okay, so with Jesse and Miguel, we have seven, <laughs> Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Okay, so we're gonna have, definitely have to use something else, but let's see what we get to start with. It's a two, oh my God, that's a nine. Oh man. Okay, so we have, that was seven, so that's nine, uh, 10, 15, and 17. <laughs> Glad we camped. All right, so let's get these cleared up and move on to 57.2. You harvest crystals growing in the mouth of a geyser. All right, yeah, all of that for one fire quartz. <laughs> Just one. Just one. We also only have like one totem left and it wants three ice diamonds. So I don't think we're going to get that one. Stone of snow. Oh, that was an explorer for two. And now let's do another explore and check out 16. In a flash of fire and ash, a huge bull man slams the damp ground with bloody hooves, dominating the air with a scent like gunpowder, rust, and musk. Your pain has fueled my strength. I can wait no longer. I thirst for the kill. You hear Mikra's voice in your mind. I will give you what strength I can for this fight.
Okay, so not gonna lie, I thought this was gonna be a little higher level. It's a level 10, that's still really nothing to sneeze at, but I think we've done 11s and 12s. So being a god, I thought maybe he'd be a little bit more difficult than the salamander, but we know that they are weakened. So, wow, okay, well here's a thing. Definitely something to consider. Special rule, if this isn't your first campaign, when you reshuffle the combat deck, take 10 damage. This is our first campaign. And honestly, I have so many cards that still would be helpful. I don't even think we're gonna worry about that. I don't know if that is a big enough factor when you have, you're this far into the campaign and have so many cards. Cause honestly, once you cover up anytime he would do damage, it's just really a time killer. Like personal time killer, not in-game time killer. So not super worried about that, but let's see what our first five cards are. Okay, so we have the Salamander Sword, the Bone Maze, Shore Maze, Star, Fire Blast Stone, and Precise Strike. Things I need to remember is Claire can use a rope to take away two tokens. Can also spend a token to hit for one higher. Jesse automatically hits for one time or one higher. Can reroll, place diagonally two combat cards. Miguel can reroll, can remove one power token, and Miguel can also remove power tokens, not an attack, and we'll also heal too. Okay, okay, we also have Sticky Trap where we can spend a Sand Honey, which we're gonna do, and we are going to remove three power tokens. So let's go ahead and remove those from the torso. Uh, Claire has the one for the rope, so we do have a rope, and that is going to remove two power tokens, so let's remove those from the head. So let's have Azarius go first with the Fire Blast Stone. He is going to spend one of his tokens to remove one um, power token from the head, and he's going to attack the head. And it is remove a token, six attack plus a die roll. If you roll negative one, you take three damage. So let's go ahead and move, remove this other power token. Oh, and let's see if the dice are gonna be kind to us today. And it's a one, so that's a seven. But he does have one defense here, so it's gonna be the six. So I think he's gonna go one. Oh, that's not even a space, dang it. Oh man, I can't go here. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so I think, let's see, he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, or, yes, one, two, three, four, five, six. And he does not have a block for that, so Orfash is gonna do two damage. And that covered, I think, just one, yes, one synergy. So let's give that synergy to Jesse, who is going to go next. And she is going to use the Bone Mace on the head as well. So that's two plus a die roll plus her four strength. And then with the synergy, she'll be able to block it. So let's see what she gets. So she's starting with six plus a die roll. And it's two, so that's eight. Since Jessie can go diagonal, I think she's gonna go one, five, six, seven, and eight. She will use the synergy token to block, but she also covered a synergy token. So who is she gonna give it to? Let's have her give it to Ed, who will go next. And Ed is gonna use the salamander sword. You know what, instead, you know what, Ed is actually, or um, we're gonna give the synergy token to Azarias. But Ed's still gonna use the salamander sword, but he's going to use it on the torso, but since there's not any, cause I don't know if, I think if, I'm kind of assuming that you'd remove tokens from the area that you're attacking. I don't know if that's right though, but that's what I'm assuming. So we don't need that synergy token right now. So Ed is going to use a salamander sword on the torso, which is going to be nine plus a die roll. And we don't have to worry about the splash damage because that's not gonna matter. But we wanna make sure that we get rid of these um, defense and the frightened at the very minimum. And he rolls a one, so that is 10. Wow, minus a two, so it's eight. So I think he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll get most of that covered up with only one power token left, or left uncovered. 
And he did cover up a synergy token. We're going to give that to Jesse, who is going to go next with Precise Strike. And Jesse is going to go after the legs. So she has four precision, or perception, I'm sorry, plus the two. So that is going to be six plus, she's going to get one defense. Oh, uh, I needed to take two damage. Okay, so no die roll. It's six and a defense. <gasps> I forgot about her plus one. I forgot about her plus one. Oh my gosh, when she attacked earlier. But I don't think she would have been able to do anymore. Okay, so we need to remember that. That's really important right now. She gets plus one on her attacks. So that actually gives her attack of seven. So she's going to go one, two, three, four, four, seven. Yes, right? Four, five, six, seven. Yes. She is going to use the synergy token to remove a power token. So he's attacking for four. She gets a block, so it's attack of three. She will block with the fur hat, so she'll take no damage. And let's see. She did cover a power token, and we are going to give that to, let's give it to Claire, and that is the end of the first round. So we did cover both of his attacks, so he'll get one um, power token there and two back on his legs. So for this round, we still have uh, Shormay Star, we have the Nut Gun, Alzarian Knife, Taunt, um, Mechanical Fist, and Thrax Pain. Okay, so for this round, I'm thinking we're planning on Clear doing the Mechanical Fist. Ed mm, doing Taunt. Let's have Miguel use the Net Gun. I'm thinking he could just cover up these two and we can be done with that. And let's have Azarias do Thrax Pain. So just to start things, oh, that's two that could be removed though. It is what it is. Okay, so Miguel is gonna go after the torso. It's gonna remove this uh, power token and he will go one, two. He also then blocks all incoming damage and he covered a synergy token and it looks like Ed will need one, so he'll get that one. You know what? I think instead of Azarias using Thrax Pete, I think it's gonna be Jesse. I think we're gonna need those diagonals. Might not matter. I might be overthinking. Okay, let's have me overthink. Never. Okay, so let's have Jesse go after the legs. We'll remove two power tokens, and it's going to be five plus a roll, but we'll take damage if we roll a negative one. Ooh. Oh, and also remember she has plus one, so it's six plus the die roll, but she can re-roll, and it is the two. Okay, so that was five, six, eight. I say we go for it and just see if we could take him out this turn. Let's go one, two, three. So for the eight here, she doesn't give up a synergy, but instead of worrying about these two, because we won't have to attack here again anyway. So that is eight right here. And she is going to take four damage unless we can block some of it. So let's use the Lucran gloves to block two so she only takes or i'm sorry block three so she only takes one damage this is going to go in our discard pile Whew. okay let's have claire go next with our mechanical fist it is one plus the die roll plus her craft her craft is four Whew. i'm nervous <laughs> okay it's going to be five plus a dice roll oh negative one okay at least it was a negative one on that one and not the other one so it is four. You know what? We're going to roll with it. He can't really hurt us anymore. She'll cover that four. And the fist will go in the discard. And now I think it's going to be up to Jessie. She might be able to end us. Oh, oh. Um, she's going to use discard the synergy to block the incoming damage. Jessie is going to go for her second turn instead of having Ed go. Because she, if we can get her to five can take those out. So she is going to use Shormay's uh, star. And as long as she doesn't get a negative one, oh, we still have to get up here too. Oh man, I forgot about those. Okay. So definitely not this round, but next round. We got a next round. Okay. So let's go. As long as it's not a negative one, it's a two. So those are covered. We have one more round. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I forgot about the head. <laughs> I got so excited. I forgot about it. But that's the end of the round. 
she is going to block for one. She'll take one damage. That's fine. And yeah, let's grab our next five cards. He can't do anything. He'll get the two power tokens right here, but that doesn't do anything because we're not attacking there. Okay, so we got the Screaming Skull, Double Punch, Mikra Shard, Storm, uh, so Storm Sword, and Hidden Strike. And so let's see. Let's have Miguel take the Storm Sword. Azarius can do Mikra's Shard. Jesse for some Double Punch. And actually, the Screaming Skull is better than Mikra's Shard, so we won't worry about that. But let's have Jesse go first on the attacking the head. So she has one, two, three, four strength plus a dice roll plus her one. So we're doing five plus a dice roll, and we need eight to take him out. Oh, it's a negative one. <laughs> of course it is, but that's fine. That's the four. So we'll cover that one up. Jesse's the only one that can go diagonal. So if, oh wait, she has to take damage. She's gonna take. Two damage, but for the sake of wrapping this up, let's have Jesse go again on the head. As long as she doesn't draw like a negative one, we are good, and she can get those two. It's a plus one, so that's six. So that is two, four. She will take one damage unless I have something else just to block it, because why not? And she will, uh, you know what? We're gonna heal anyway. We'll let her, we'll just let her take it. <laughs> Let her take it. She's got this. But that is the end of Orfash. And let's see what we get. Orfish lets out a wild roar, falling to his knees. Mikra is helping you, but I will have my revenge. In a flash of acrid smoke and ash, he disappears, leaving a few broken crystals on the scorched ground. As you examine the crystals, a cloud of light fills your vision. You find yourself in a desert under a cold sky. As you seek a place to rest, your cousin watches you, her eyes shining with malice. She slaps you and you fall back in surprise. We're leaving you here, says Jesse. If we keep following you, the portal will close. We'll never get home, says Miguel. You're a foolish bear that belongs in a cage. Your impulsive fancies could have killed us all. Azarius grabs your arm and throws you into a prison of rusty iron, slamming a thick lock onto the door. You run to the bars, grasping the cracked iron until blood seeps over your knuckles and drips on your feet. But you can't make a sound, not even to utter a word of protest. The sky grows scarlet, the air thins. You're suffocating. Claire, wake up. The vision vanishes as Azarius grabs your hands. You're panting as if you just run for miles. When will I be cured of this? I thought we defeated Orfash. The wound on your neck pulses with sudden pain, reminding you of the curse, taunting you with thoughts that it will never go away. Likely when we get back home, or when Mika has her doctums. I don't know. Azarius won't look you in the eye. There's a weight on his quiet soul that has grown heavier in recent days. Perhaps then I'll be able to see my mother again, as Mikra promised me. Okay, so we got keyword promised. Place this card face down beneath the top four cards of the event deck. When you draw it, turn to 109. This counts as your event card draw. Oh, gosh. Okay, well, we don't have that many camps left, so I'm not sure we'll get we'll get there, but we'll see. So uh, we also got a ice diamond, a tundra berry, berry and a fire quartz. Uh, so let's see, since we just finished combat, Azarius is going to heal too. I think we're good. Jesse will slowly heal as we explore. But I do see we have a riddle stone right here and one time left for this turn. Okay, so let's move. Oh... Yeah, let's move the one here, spending our last time for this turn. And since we have two camps left, and obviously 
Uh, four more cards before we get to the next part of that part of the story. I think we are actually going to end the video here because I know it's already really, really long. And then hopefully the next one will be the, I should say hopefully. I'm thinking then that will give us a decent length of video. I was afraid that it was just going to end really quickly, but I think there's probably a full video left in this story. So yeah, I think we're going to stop here and next time I'm thinking we're going to, we're going to finish up the story, but thank you so much for hanging out with me. So sorry. This video took so long to come out. But it looks like things are calming down and we're going to have videos more regularly. But till then, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.